D-Wade, LeBron, Chris, let's start off. I mean, I know when I was a player, I never looked forward to media day, but I know what the <laughs> hell went on this summer. How, how, how much did you guys look forward to media day? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a chance for people to get a, an initial report of how they feel your team is going to be, of how your summer has been. And I think everyone knows it's been a different summer for, for all three of us. So, uh, I mean, do you look forward to it? Uh, I think yes, because it's one step closer to training camp. You get out to practice, you know that next day you get to rolling. So um, we look forward to it at, um, to that point. Well, looking at this D-Wade, you've been here for a while. You know, a lot of fans want to know about you three, but then a lot of play player fans want to know about the other players and also Coach Spo. Can you talk about his strengths and his um, the way is his coaching style? How will it help these other guys? Well, you know, one thing that I love about Coach Spo is, you know, he's real. You know, and for him is. You know, what you see is what you get. You know, he's a guy who, you know, he has a philosophy. He sticks to his philosophy, but he also understands today's players and, and, and the game that we, that, that we play today. So, you know, he's a guy that they're going to be able to go to, you know, in the middle of games and, you know, be able to, you know, talk to him. And he's going to let them have some freedom as well, but also he's strict to his principles. It's a good combination. And I think, like I said, you know, he hasn't hit 40 yet. He's still in his 30s. And, um, you know, he can relate to us as well. LeBron, you talk about being a historian, loving the game, watching teams back in the 80s and 90s. How do you envision this Miami Heat team? Do you have any comparison <laughs> that you're looking at some teams back in the day? Uh, man, I don't know. Maybe like, uh, I don't know, maybe like Magic, uh, James Worthy, and Kareem a little bit. I don't know who's going to take the sky hook. <laughs> I guess I'll be big game. I'll be I'll be big game James part two. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, you know, like I said, I am. I, I love the history of the game, man. And I, I mean, you, you've seen those teams back in the days, man. It was not just one guy. It wasn't just Magic by himself. It wasn't just Isaiah. It wasn't just Jordan. It wasn't just Bird by themselves, man. They, um, you know, they might got all the headlines and the praise, but uh, they had other Hall of Famers. Um, with them, not just all stars, not just guys that can um, come off the bench and score 20 points. They had guys that can really go get it themselves if they was on the other team by themselves. When you look at it, you know defense has been here in Miami, and as you guys know as well. And we talk about offense. I envision you guys getting up and down, running. That's going to be easy. But when the game stops in the playoffs, championships, the half court, what do you think is going to be y'all staple? You know, when getting up and running, you guys are unselfish. But in the half court basketball. If any of y'all can talk about what's going to be your staple? Well, I mean, I, I think the thing, you know, like you said, we want to create offense, you know, from our defense. That's our main goal. But when it breaks down and we have to, we have playmakers, you know, and not just the three sitting up here. We are other guys that can make the game easier, you know, for everyone else on the floor. And you need that in the half court, especially versus those great defensive teams, especially versus Lent. You need other guys that will be able to penetrate. You need other guys to be able to make shots, to make the game easier for everyone else. So, you know, of course, we're going to run a lot of offensive sets. You know, you play here. You know, when I was here, we played together, and we're going to have all offensive sets in the world. But at the end of the day, you need somebody that's going to be able to get that ball and going to be able to make plays, and we have a lot of playmakers. When you look at it all summer, everybody talked about with two seconds left, who's going to take that shot. From a player standpoint, who's going to be that guy in that huddle from a defensive standpoint saying, hey, I want to stop the Kobe Bryants, the Carmelos, or the big-time scores on that last possession? Oh, well, for me, I'm, uh, I'm always going to take that challenge. Um, and I think all three of us, I mean, as a team, we all going to take that challenge. Um, but, for, I mean, that's where I make my staple. I mean, I love the defensive side of the floor. And, um, you know, and that's what, that's what creates offense. Defense getting a stop against a big-time score. Um, it's very tough um, in this league to get individual one-on-one -on -one defensive stops. Um, we have to do it as a team. But, um, you know, I have no problem with taking that challenge. You know, you look at it, everybody's going to have to sacrifice points. But can you look at this this year, Chris, saying, hey, I might lead the league in rebounding or some steals or field goal percentage. What else is going to be your staple besides scoring points? I mean, I rebound the basketball. That's what I do. You know, um, I've always done that, and especially with these guys here, I can look forward to more offensive rebounds because I'm not going to take as many shots as I did in Toronto. I know that's going to change for me. So being able just to move without the ball, you know, get a lot of easy buckets to help field goal percentage and a lot of offensive and defensive rebounds and just kick it to these guys to start the break. I think um, that's very important. But anything on the defensive side, I think we're all looking to improve in one way or the other as far as steals, blocks, rebounds. You know, we can all really improve. And if we improve on the defensive end, you know, his field goal percentage is going to go up because he, when he's a beast in the open court. You already know what he can do. So, I mean, the outlet pass, two dribbles, you know, we'll be at the basket. So um, that's going to be our backbone is, is the defensive end. Now, when you look at LeBron, 
you know, six years you're going to be here. Is that six rings? I mean, that's what we hope. I mean, that's what I hope. That's the only reason I came down here for. <laughs> so if it's not six rings, what will be an unsuccessful season, in your opinion, from all three of you guys? Well, an unsuccessful season will be us not reaching our potential, not getting better every day, taking games off, um, you know, taking games off because we know we have talent. You know, we're more talented than this team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we take three quarters off and then we win it in the fourth. You know, that that – that can make sure we lose games later on in the game. We might be able to do that against some of the teams that maybe not be as talented as us, but playing hard every single night, playing hard for 48 minutes, as close to 48 minutes as possible, that will be an unsuccessful season for me because, um, and for us because we know um, the, the quality of players we have and we know exactly what we want to get to. Chris, last question for you and D-Wade. Team to beat in the Eastern Conference. Boston. Boston. Team to beat. As far as you, as far as overall the NBA. Oh, in the NBA, the Lakers. You know, they're the champions, hands down. So you're going through Boston, you're going through LA? We're going through way more than them two, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you well, know, yeah, you Boston is the Eastern Conference champs, and the Lakers is the, the world champion, so we have to get through them, but we got other people in front of them. Yeah, Appreciate you have it. Orlando out there too. There, yeah. You know? yeah. Don't Thank you guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.